Um, I started off uh, thinking about physiotherapy halfway through my seventh form year. In those days it was called 6A. Um, I had planned to go to university to do a master's de uh, a bachelor's degree or at least in um, mathematics and probably follow in the footsteps of my mother to become a teacher. But I went to see the careers teacher um, to look at what alternatives there were and one of the things I had looked at was doing medicine but when she told me it was six years I thought oh I can't th I couldn't think of anything worse at the age of uh, 17 of doing six years study at university she said well have you thought about physiotherapy and I th thought physiotherapy what's that never heard of it and she gave me the pros prospective for the school of physiotherapy and I read about it the information it gave me that it was working with people, you do lots of the things that you would do at medical school. And uh, so I applied for physiotherapy and was accepted, and that's how I came to go to physiotherapy school. Um, I started physiotherapy school at um, the School of Physiotherapy in Dunedin um, in 1966. Um, I was still 17 when I started, um, although I soon turned 18. Um, going, I had to leave home to do that and going down to Dunedin was exciting, going to university um, was quite exciting, being away from home for the first time was exciting and um, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I knew from the very moment I stepped inside the doors and went to my first lectures that I was in the right job and I have never wavered that after 40 something, 45 years. Um, from, uh, I, I do recall when we were at the School of Physiotherapy, uh, we had eight o'clock lectures, lectures every morning at the medical school. Uh, we had lectures starting at eight o'clock um, every morning uh, at the medical school. We, you, uh, there were either anatomy or physiology lectures. They were given to us by fifth year medical students. I do recall the, our anatomy lecturer, lecturer, his name was Miles Wislang. He was an amazing teacher. His, uh, he used to draw everything on the blackboard with different coloured uh, um, chalks and he talked endlessly uh, without one single lecture note and he was a fabulous teacher. He was very strict. We were, when we, we had to be there at 8 o'clock, he closed the doors and locked them and a roll call had to be taken. Um, and they lasted for an hour. So that was every uh, morning we had anatomy or physiology. The physiology lecturer was a very laid back fifth year medical student and I do not remember his name, but he would sort of wander in in sharp contrast to Miles Wisling and uh, sort of start about five past eight. And he wasn't a bad lecturer, but he doesn't have the, the precision of Miles Wisling. Um, of interest is Miles Winslang went on to become a, I think, a plastic surgeon, and I met him many, many years later when his wife had premature um, triplets, actually, in the neonatal unit at National Women's. Um, I think he was amazed that I could remember him, but how could one forget such an amazing lecturer in um, anatomy? Um, we had to learn all our anatomy off by heart, um, and I remember being terrified by anatomy exams. Uh, I'm not sure how exams go now, but we were given a bone and told, now tell me about the muscles that attach to this bone. And we had to give the origin attachment, nerve supply and action of all the muscles that would attach to those bones. So that was sort of the substance of our uh, anatomy exams. And we could always be guaranteed in our anatomy exams also that uh, we'd have a nerve uh, and we'd have to describe the pathway of the nerve down the arm or the leg and all the muscles that it supplied. Um, we worked actually right through the day from 8am to 5 o'clock with lectures in that first year. Um, usually our last lecture of the day was the uh, physics lecture, uh, which was at the um, university, uh, remembering that we weren't part of the university at this time. Um, the lecture for physics uh, was four to five and we had this old codger, he was quite old, remembering how young we were, um, and uh, he lectured, it was very, very boring and I think most people found physics quite a difficult subject. 
Um, I had done physics to seventh form level and I found it very easy, but many people had never studied physics before and found it extremely hard. And the purpose of the physics I understand at that time was so that we could understand various machines such as shortwave machines and ultrasound machines and ultraviolet machines and um, that's my understanding of that situation. Um, throughout the day when we had lectures, we, when we, we had practical se uh, <coughs> sessions, we had to change into um, uh, a uniform and our uniform at that time was a teal culotte and a white blouse and a teal cardigan, white sand shoes and white socks. And the guys had um, the same except they had uh, trousers and I can't remember what colour their trousers were. Um, so we always had to have that uniform whenever we had any practical classes. I do remember um, one of our, our movement teacher, as she was called, Mrs Kirby. Um, Mrs Kirby uh, used to do movement classes. She was actually a remedial gymnast and she came from um, England and she had a very strong English accent. Um, and we very rudely called her classes, Kirby's Kiddies Class. Um, and um, they weren't particularly interesting. Um, we also had um, Gay uh, Woods, who was our lecturer in, or was she Gay Jamison? I uh, can't remember which one she, her name was. Um, one's her married name, one's her single name. And she took us for what was called treatment in those days. Uh, treatments was where you looked at all the different um, conditions that you would strike as a physiotherapist. And it was a matter of rote learning in those days where you would be given etiology, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms and treatment and that was how you expected to learn it. Um, I have to admit to being quite frustrated by this because I felt that was an incredible waste of time and in the end, in the end developed a, a way of learning it so that I didn't have to learn everything off by heart using what in today's world is called a clinical reasoning model. Um, we also had electrotherapy classes. They were taken by um, Renee, I can't think of a surname at the moment, uh, and Mrs Worthy, that's right, she was called. We always called her Mrs Worthy. And uh, she taught us all our um, electrotherapy and we had Frank Whedon for, oh, PNF, I do remember um, him telling that he'd just come back from the, the United States where he had obviously been taught there by the U US guru um, Maggie Knott and I remember him saying you've got to wind it up and let it go and as Maggie Knott would say wind it up and let it go um, and uh, he also taught us some massage and I think Mrs Worthy taught us some massage at the time too. Um, we also had a lot of outside lecturers uh, for things, topics like orthopaedics. We had Mr Merkin. Mr Merkin was a, a little man um, who was quite delightful. He used to turn up very smartly dressed every morning for lectures. They're usually nine o'clock um, in the morning and he always would have a rose in his lapel and a bow tie. Um, and we were very fortunate. He was very kind to physiotherapy students and we would often go and watch um, orthopaedic operations when Mr Merkin was doing surgery. He wasn't one of these, these surgeons who played God, which was so often. Um, many of the surgeons, if you went there, they liked to play to the gallery and belittle physiotherapy students. Another memory I have of the School of Physiotherapy is that we had to do nursing classes. Uh, where we had to go and learn how to make a bed um, properly, nursing style, learn to make mitre corners and how to take the linen and take it and put it on the bed, nursing style, and make beds. And we had to do a little bit of nursing practice, but I, that was very vague, so it obviously wasn't very important. But I do remember a couple of years later, um, when I was a staff member at Dunedin Hospital, the students had a week where they had to be on the wards uh, being a nurse and there was actually a strike about that. They hated it. Um, they were there to be physiotherapy students, not to be nurses.